I'm Leo Phillips, host of This Must Be The Gig. We're a weekly podcast that documents everything about the world of live music. Speaking with choreographers, costume and set designers, the people who run beloved venues and festivals, and, of course, speaking with musicians about that one gig that changed their lives. Get your peek behind the curtain at consequenceofsound.net, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Consequence Podcast Network. Welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's an audio interview series presented by WFPK Independent Louisville at WFPK.org. Consequence of Sound and the Consequence Podcast Network. Uh, You know the drill. What I'd like you to do if you're listening right now, hit the subscribe button so you can keep up with these interviews and uh, leave a rating and a review as well. I'm Kyle Meredith. Today my guest is Jim Reed of the band The Jesus and Mary Chain. They're about to hit a tour with Nine Inch Nails. So we talk a little bit about their history and uh, some news about them already thinking about their next record, the follow-up to their comeback record, Damage and Joy. Then we get into the 20th anniversary of their album, Monkey. This is the album that sort of broke up the band. It was the final record for like over, well over a decade. And Jim gives me all the gruesome details that went into it, as well as all the celebratory moments. It's a great record that was barely heard. It's one of my all-time favorite records. I'm so happy to be talking with Jim Reed here. It's Kyle Meredith with the Jesus and Mary Chain. Hello. How are you, sir? Uh, good, thanks. I do want to get into a um, sort of a cool anniversary for the uh, Mary Chain, but... I know you guys still got lots going on this year. Uh, I guess the next big thing you're going on tour with Nine Inch Nails is that the next the, the next big outing? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's that's the next thing. Yeah, yeah. How did that one come about? Did they reach out to you? It's a it's a great tour to be on. Uh, yeah, I mean it was pretty straightforward. They asked us to do it, and uh, we were pleased to be asked, and it's, it should be great. I was, uh, you know, <laughs> I was tracing both bands back, you know, to, to similar spots, and I said, you were both on the Crow soundtrack, right? It's a it's a good opportunity for those Crow soundtrack cuts. Do you all have a history with uh, with Reznor's gang uh, prior to this? Well, you'd have to go back quite a long time, but they, uh, they, they were on tour as our guests in 19... Christ, 1989 or 1990. Yeah, wow. So it's been quite a while. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is this still part of the Damage and Joy tour? Are you kind of calling it that, or is this clean slate? Well, I mean, we, we will be playing songs from that album, but it's a bit of a stretch to call it part of the Damage and Joy tour. Um, it's just the Mary Chain line. There'll be a bit of everything, and uh, there'll be some of Damage and Joy, but we've sort of stopped calling the tour that, if you know what I mean. We're thinking of doing a, a new album soon, so that, after this tour, I reckon that will be the, the next thing we do. Yeah, that's in great news. I mean, by the way, uh, Damage and Joy was one of my favorite records of the year. Uh, pleasantly pleased, because you never know. You never know after a while, you know, what the band's going to sound like, and you all knocked it out of the park with that one. Well, thanks for that. Thanks for that. So, yeah. Job done. I, I might want to ask then, you know, if, you, if you're at least thinking about a new record, d- is the songwriting happening? Because I know with Damage and Joy, you were able to, you all were able to kind of reach into the bag for some of the older stuff to reintroduce. I, is that going to be a, a similar idea maybe with the next one, or do you think this is going to be all new? It will probably be mostly new. I mean, as far as anyone's concerned, there will be songs that they haven't heard before. And as to whether they are songs that were written like 10 minutes ago, um, probably not. Yeah, I mean, it won't be songs that have been released before, but there'll be some new songs and some songs that we've had knocking about for a while. I mean, we work best to a deadline, and, um, you know, because we're, we're the laziest people you could imagine. <laughs> so we kind of always put these things off as long as we can, and then we get to a point where it's like, well... Let's just um, say we're going to have an album recorded by six months from now, and that, that's how it works. Well, it, it's great to see this this latest chapter of the band. I mean, obviously, you were one of the uh, the bands that's been uh, celebrated that no one was quite sure if we would ever hear from again. You know, if it was going to happen for you all. So I was I was really happy with uh, 
with the way it's turned out. Very much. Mm, thank you. Yeah, I do want to hit on one of the big uh, anniversaries though, because that's what I reached out about. Uh, it's the 20th anniversary of the Monkey record, and I feel like this is one of the, l you know, it, it's not as celebrated as much as some of the other ones, and it's a big favorite of mine. Um, uh, well, I'm glad it's a favorite of yours, favorite of mine. It's one of my, I think it's up, with, up definitely up there with the rest of the Mary Chain output. Maybe one of the better records. I don't know, but it, it, it was a hard record to make, and the band was kind of um, falling apart for various reasons at that time. But the music didn't suffer. But in the, at that time, the, the other thing is the Mary Chain was sort of kind of, I don't know, people just thought that the Britpop had come along and made us, marginalised us, made us obsolete, which uh, we felt was rather unfair, to say the least. But, um, yeah, it didn't get the fair shake that I think it deserved. It's interesting how, you know, some people per perceive an album, how they hear an album in, in the moment. Because, it, it, you know, a lot of times it can be clouded by, you know, fatigue, you know. I mean, you guys were a band for a long time, and at that point you're over a decade, I guess. And that, Or, or if there's a change in, in the sound in the world, you just don't hear it sometimes uh, in the way that... Uh, I guess it should be heard. Uh, I feel like that was probably a part of that as well. I mean, it, I, I suppose what it was was we were just like carrying on from where we'd left off with previous records. But um, it seemed that everybody wanted Britpop and more Britpop. And um, we didn't really see that there couldn't be room for both, you know, what we were doing and, you know, what everybody else wanted to do. It just... It felt as if a bit like uh, we were wearing an artistic straitjacket back then. You know, you had to do things that all sounded bouncy and upbeat and uh, jolly and fit in with this thing that everybody, this runaway train that was that movement. And um, we didn't feel like that at the time. We were going through various nervous breakdowns and we were... William and me were just not getting on at all. I think everybody knows about how it all went down. We, I mean, we really, we, we hated the sight of each other at that time. So the record was never going to be a happy record. It was never going to be something that Britney Spears was going to do a cover <laughs> of, you know what I mean? It was, it was, um, it, it, it really was. It was on Nervous Breakdown record. Even if it hadn't been the Britpop, I mean, just with what was going on in the band, you, you still did the record. Did you th know that it was probably going to come to an end, the band was going to come to an end either way? felt like something had to give at that time. It wasn't, I mean, it's hard to describe it, really. It wasn't fun being in a band anymore. And I, I didn't look forward to going into the studio, and I didn't look forward to going on the road. And got to a point where you thought, well, this is, you know, it's supposed to be fun, is it not? You know, and if it isn't, isn't there something wrong? I mean, I keep saying I don't think the music suffered at all. I think that music still stands. You know, it is what it is. It did the, you know, didn't do the job that it was intending to do. But I, I, when I listen to that record now, I, mean, it, it, I just feel saddened that hardly anybody heard it and that people could be so affected by, I don't know, well, it's so fickle, really, that people wouldn't have given us a, a chance at that time for reasons of fashion. Really. Well, that's a, a, a big point to make there, too, because I think that makes this album all the more impressive, that here you have a cultural movement that's moving away, here you have a band that's falling apart, and yet these songs are so good. Like, is I don't know, do you credit that to just you all just being great songwriters? I mean, there had to be some creative juices still working around you all, even with all the obstacles, to make these songs come out in the way they had. Well, there was a lot of um, me and William, each song was a kind of a little bit of a fuck you to the <laughs> other one, if you know what I mean. And it was, a, you know, it's all, you know, you, know, you hear about, like, sort of, uh, you know, the recording of rumors, like Fleetwood Mac, how it, you know, all these songs were so personal, and the band, you know, everybody's shagging everybody else, and you think, well, how the fuck could a band, you know, function under those conditions? Well, it was a bit like that with us. It was like all of these songs about hating each other and all of these, like, situations where we, we had to get out of the room if the other one had walked into it. And you think, how could we make a record under those circumstances? But we did it. I don't know how it worked, and I don't know how we did it, but we did. And that sort of plays into, of course, uh, uh, the one-two punch of I love rock and roll, I, I hate rock and roll. Uh, w there was a little bit of that jabbing going on there, right? Uh, I mean, William 
Adam still thinks that I only wrote that song to annoy him. You know, he <laughs> thinks that that's the only reason I wrote that song. And that the, the, the truth of the matter is that I love his song, I Hate Rock and Roll, but I felt it was only half the story. All of the things that he describes in that song, I completely agree with. I, I hate all the fucking, like, you know, all the little fools that don't have a clue. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I hate having to deal with them. And I hate all of the, the sides of the music business that aren't so pleasant. But at the same time, you know, rock and roll gave us our existence. It was, it was what we lived and breathed for at that time and, you know, the 1980s and 90s. And it gave us a life to live. So I feel it was a bit the negative side he pointed out and the positive side I pointed out. Well, they're, they're great songs. They're both great songs, and they play well together, uh, especially as nice bookends, you know, for an mm. album. Um, you just re- re- even, like, and a lot of the best albums have mythology tied into it, and that's just one of those extra layers that kind of gives it, you know, that depth, I guess. I mean, you were also one, speaking of rock and roll, you were on one of the best rock and roll labels at the time. This was your only album for Sub Pop, right? Yeah. Yeah, did that add to the experience at all? Just kind of being in their world. I suppose it was a bit late to be around the the whole sub pop thing because at that time, uh, you know, things like obviously Kurt Cobain's in the ground at that time, and uh, all the you know the, the, the whole Seattle thing had, had been and gone as well. So it was kind of fitting that the Mary Chain, at a time in our career when it felt like we are being lumped in with them past. Uh, past scenes that that we should be our last record should be on sub pop in 1997. Really, <laughs> it's an interesting way to put that that I had not considered. I'll bring up another track too. You know, it's Sister Vanilla singing on uh, the song Mo Tucker. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. It's um, I think it's the placement of it. I've always thought it almost sort of gives the album a feeling of a, like an intermission. You know, like, okay, the band's going to take a break and, and here's something, you know, different. Except that there's still 12 tracks left after this intermission. But the Mary Chain, it was always kind of, um, you know, if someone was in the studio, uh, somebody, you know, Linda came to visit us in the studio and somebody at the time just said, oh, God, why don't you sing this? And it was, we used to do things like that all the time in the Mary Chain. People tend to kind of like, block out the next six months where they know exactly what they're going to be doing, what time they're going to be taking a shit and so all the rest of it. We used to just do whatever the hell we felt like at that particular moment, and that was just one of those. My sister was in the studio. I was about to do the vocal, and I said, here, why don't you do it? And she did it. She did it in one take, and we thought it sounded great. And, uh, you know, and she named it Mo Tucker because we all thought she sounded like Mo Tucker singing. And that was it. That was how that came about. And, the, you know, the other thing I point out about this record, too, is it, it does... I've seen reviewers say this, so I am borrowing, but for it to be the final record, whether you knew it or not, it did sort of encapsulate every one of your sounds through the years. You know, there was the dark, drony, spacey stuff that was happening. There was the uh, concise, you know, poppy, punchy stuff that in, in some of the songs. Was that complete coincidence, or, or were you guys maybe trying to, to tie it in a bow like that? I think... Uh, we, we we weren't aware of that at the time, to be honest with you. But I think it was a bit like that that we were trying to get all you know all Mary Chain sounds together on one record. That said, this is our last shot at it. Let's just get a little bit of the, everything, including the kitchen sink, in on this one. So yeah, I don't I don't know if it was a conscious thing that we thought at the time, but certainly was something like that was going on mm-hmm. when you look back on it. So when, when it did finally come to an end after that, you know, with as much weight as you all were carrying with each other, was it scary to think that you're off on your own, or was it a relief? It was, well, it was, it was both. It was definitely both. Um, you know, it, it need not have happened that way. I've, all, I've, I've looked back on that, that time many times, and I think had we had good people around us that could see what the situation was, they would have said, look, you, you go off in that direction and you go off in that direction. Don't see each other for a year and see how it goes. But instead, our management booked us a big tour of America, which, like, <laughs> I think we got three days into that tour and the band broke up. So if someone around us would have realized that, you know, this could be mended, it may have been, it could have been retrieved. But, you know, no one could see that and nobody really cared enough. So we just got 
you know, I mean, we just got chucked into the the deep end with the sharks, and uh, and that was it. We we just we we were screwed, and that, you know, we 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 came to blows, William and I, after two or three days into the tour. And we had a famous show at the House of Blues, and Christ, uh, blues, plenty of blues going on that night. And it was it was just horrific, absolutely horrific. Wow. We we broke down and we we broke up and broke down in front of an audience. Wow, I mean that's 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 got to be its own heavy moment right there, knowing that that everyone's witnessing this. Oh God, and I was so so wasted. I forgot that I was on stage and it was a show. I was like screaming at William as like it, it, you know as if it were in like one of our houses. And then at some point. I turned around and wondered who all were these people were, and I thought, oh, oh, it's a gig. I get it. And that was it. That was the end of the band. It's like a movie moment right there. Just one of those. Oh, God. Like, yeah. Well, you know, it did play into the, you know, the if absence makes the heart grow fonder, as the old phrase goes, you know, a lot of bands was able to kind of uh, use that to their advantage eventually. And it's important to say eventually because, you know, there was a whole slew of those bands who sort of, disappeared into the night one night and everyone suddenly realized you know what they had lost and and there was the demand there was the fandom there was all of these bands in the 2000s would just drop you into their songs i mean what it was i can i can recall death cab and and jimmy eat world and even the shins recently right uh, did, did these make it their way towards you as well oh well, yeah i mean I, I, well i've heard some of those things but um yeah i mean that's that, that's what the mary tune was for as well it was like there was a lot to be learned there we were, I mean, we were passing on sort of like ideas to whoever was listening. You know, you know, you don't things that we learn from the likes of the Ramones and the Velvets. You don't need to go to guitar lessons for uh, six months a year before you feel good enough to climb up on a stage. In fact, it's almost better if you can't play in a way because out of like a lack of technical ability comes like there's a kind of a desperation that you you pull something out of the bag because you have to and it's because you can't play you've not had lessons to screw everything up you just think well what can i do i can't make a noise on a guitar because i'm not quite there yet what happens if i sort of like pour you know a glass of beer over a fuzz pedal while i'm sort of like a pissing on it or something like that and it'll explode and it'll sound great you know it's like imagination you know you have to do these things but you'll you'll never learn that if you go to guitar lessons man <laughs> god i'm ranting on that that's all right i enjoy it for an album that never got its credit for an album that you and i are both uh you know in, enjoying talking about here do, do you, is there any celebration do you, do you find uh is there any time to celebrate the record this year in any way probably not and it's just Purely because I don't think there's the demand. I mean, it's still quite an obscure record. Uh, there's a kind of a hardcore Mary Chain, Mary Chain crowd that, that do seem to bring the record up from time to time. But if I'm being totally honest, there's not enough of them. So it's, we'll leave that record for a while. And um, maybe in another five years, there'll be enough people around to to make the celebrations more concrete. Well, I'm going to do my part here to help spread the word. It is a fantastic, well, fine record, and I do love it. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. And, and and I'm so excited that you guys are already kind of thinking about that next record, too. Uh, Jim, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk about Monkey with me. Uh, good luck out on the tour with the Nails, and, uh, and I'll be waiting uh, for whatever comes next. Okay, man. Thanks very much. All right. Take care. Right, bye. Bye. Hey, a huge thanks to Jim Reed of the Jesus and Mary Jane that 20th anniversary of the album Monkey. Again, they're hitting the tour circuit with Nine Inch Nails, and I'll be looking forward to that uh, new music whenever it comes around. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button, especially if you're at YouTube right now to keep up with these interviews, or if you're listening to the podcast, uh, iTunes, Podchaser, hit the subscribe button there too, uh, and then leave a rating and a review. Then you can head over to WFPK.org. That's where you'll hear me do a show every Monday through Thursday from noon to 3 Eastern. You'll also hear some bonus episodes of this series over there. I'm Kyle Meredith, and I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network.